Now that you've created your A3 format for your orthogonal drawing, let's complete an orthogonal drawing. So let's go back to our original drawing. And we need to copy two things, the front view of the clock and the three dimensional view of the clock. So copy that, Command C. And I've included a few extra layers. Um, so the isometric drawing will go here, the orthogonal drawing will go here. Uh, right now I'm gonna paste both in the same layer. Uh, let's scale down the isometric drawing first. Now to do this, you must first expand appearance. So you go to Object, Expand Appearance, and what this does, it makes the effect, uh, returns it back to um, vectors. You're dealing with vectors once more once you've expanded the appearance. Okay. Now, um, now that we've done that, um, I'll better regroup it. Okay. We can now reduce that in scale proportionally and you can go to uh, transform and make sure that it's the, both the width and the height are linked and then just reduce the size of that using uh, the shift key and the arrows for big chunky moves and just the arrows for smaller moves okay that will do us. Um, the isometric view will not be, won't be to scale, um, but the orthogonal must be to scale. Alrighty. Um, now, there are a few things we've got to do. What we need to do now is actually um, um, go back simply to line. Um, to do this, we can um, use the shape builder tool on the left hand side palette and having selected what we want to modify or create shapes from uh, then move in with the tool and click and click um, then go back in and just remove unnecessary bits we want that and recreate those hands I'll do it about three millimeters across approximately um, then simply take a copy of that command C command F which is paste in front and um, we're going to rotate that uh, at 90 degrees or 45 degrees Actually, before we do that let's make it a little smaller so again back to the transform tool unlink height and width so we're just going to go with height and just change the height slightly and there we go now we can rotate that that's it and let's move this across and down by using the shift key and the arrows on the keyboard <clears throat> and um what we now need to do is push or arrange uh, this a little differently. So at the moment, the minute hand is on top. We want it to be behind the hour hand. So right click, you can go to object, arrange, object, arrange, center back. It's gone too far back. It's gone behind um, the clock face. So we've got to fit three separate drawings in the orthogonal um, drawing so um, we've got to make space think about the, the size of the object the actual size so this is a big clock a biggish ornate sculptural um, clock so I'm thinking this is about half a meter high five, maybe 520 the scale um, could be one to five I'm just going to take a reading of what that measurement is so it is a hundred millimeters 
I think what I'll do is I'm going to reduce the maximum width down to 60 mil or maybe even less. Let's see how we go. Make sure we link both height and width. And um, I'm using now the, the toolbar above rather than the one on the, on the right hand side. And um, I'm going to change this from 100 to 60. Before you can actually start a drawing, you need to map out um, just how you're gonna fit all three views. Um, the front view, the top view, the right-hand side view. Um, and each view is full in 40 millimeters apart. Um, so yeah, that's important to note. What I do is just draw um, a little square and we have our little measuring device. I'll just knock out the fill. And okay. And one more command C, command V. And now I can drag, I can drag from the ruler some guides. Um, each endpoint. I can get rid of these now. They've served the purpose. Oh, we need to, to create some more guides. A guide that shows the extension of the smaller part of the clock and some guides extending upward showing the greatest um, width of the clock. So now we've got all these reference points. Let's just zoom in. We've got all these reference points to help us draw the top view. Oh, by the way, um, this, if I can just address this little issue. Now Saturn's clock, in reality, does not look like this. In fact, the, um, the bottom uh, portion um, tapers out on all four sides, not just the two left and right. The front and back also taper. Um, what we've created here is purely for convenience. In order to do this according to the actual design of Sounds Clock, we need to use Photoshop. Um, make a drawing first in Illustrator, then go into Photoshop. Uh, this is uh, the drawing I made in Photoshop, and this is what the Sounds Clock would actually look like if we actually were true to the design. Uh, because we can't quite extrude in these in this tapered fashion, you can still do this quite comfortably by using Illustrator in combination with Photoshop. Let's return to our drawing. Now I'll just continue. You can, you can follow. Um, essentially, what we're doing is um, using the uh, the shape tool, uh, the line tool and where necessary, the pen tool. That's the clock, it's done. The, draw the actual drawing's done. It's, it doesn't take, it's a simple kind of design, so it shouldn't take you very long to do. It will take you long to do the next bit. The next bit um, is the labeling and dimensioning. So let's lock the orthogonal drawing and let's now work uh, with dimensions. Now with our dimensions, um, we need, I think a couple more guides, one on top, and um, good, okay. Now, um, the way this works, you need projection lines that start a couple of millimeters from the edge of the design and drawn out. So line tool, hold the shift key, and that'll give you a straight line. It's uh, one point, no thicker than that please, and draw as necessary where you require your, um, your projection lines. Okay, this is a shorter one, we have a longer one. 
and now we can draw the dimension line Again, hold it shift key and one more dimension line what we'd like to do to these dimension lines is now put an arrow, arrow heads on both ends so if we go to um, the, the stroke uh, palette now you your options could be hidden so make sure that you um, so I'll hide it you'll probably get this message so show options and we're going to work down here with arrowheads what I'd like you to do is choose arrowhead number nine it's it's long it's kind of a slender elegant um, arrowhead and do that for both sides okay now we do the same thing on all sides Right, we have now all our dimension lines. Uh, before we go any further, we must understand the principle of scale. We're going to be using the scale of, of one to five. So our drawing, the one, the, um, will be scaled up in actuality to five times the, the size. So let's just type in in our title box, go back, go to the information layer and use the type tool um, and just complete the task here. Now we need to spread these this information into the blocks, into the spaces that we've created. So uh, let's do this. So we need to go either to um, the type tool um, or to window type and let's go to paragraph and we're going to go to this last box which is space after paragraph because every time you've hit return you created a new paragraph technically so uh, we want to increase the spaces between them but before we do that of course we've got to put the first line in the right position okay that's done so we're going to work at one to five which means now all the dimensions that we take from the drawing will multiply by 5 to get the true dimension. So we'll multiply 60 by 5 and you'll get 300. So the first measure up here will be 300. Go into the dimension layer, lock the orthogonal drawing. 300. You never put the, you never write 300 millimeters because we've recorded in the title box that all measurements are at three uh, are millimeters. Okay. Um, now, not, let's, let's keep this unlocked so we can actually work out the dimensions. So the width is 42. What do we do? We open up our calculator. Do I have it open? Let's have a look. Open up your calculator and you can just multiply five by 42 and you've got your uh, actual size and we put that into there and you put the measure on top of the line you can copy and paste and put uh, rather than type out continuously. Um, What's the height of this thing? The height of this thing is 104. So we go to um, Right, so we've taken our readings from the orthogonal drawing itself, and then <clears throat> we um, simply multiplied by uh, five just to get the appropriate dimensions. And our drawing 
is uh, almost done. All we need now is to label. We need to put all that information um, 10 millimeters below each view. So I'll create my little box again. And uh, bring back my guides, which is command colon. And um, I will just drag a guide to the position. Now, it's text box and it's um, top view. And now we have a completed um, orthogonal drawing of our design.